Well, hello, DevNet Day. DevNet has long been about community. We hear about community every time I think Susie Wee talks or Mandy Whaley talks. And there's few parts of DevNet's um, kind of web presence that's more community focused than code exchange. And I'm really excited to have this chance to talk with Charles Eckel about code exchange, what it's all about, um, how do you get involved with it, and all these pieces that are there. Um, without further ado, Charles, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how long have you been with DevNet? Um, what do you do as part of your day job? And I, and I hear open source is important to Cisco. Exactly why and, and how important is open source to Cisco? Yeah. Um, hey, thanks a lot for uh, having me here, Hank. Uh, it's great. Happy to talk about all this. Uh, so, you know, I joined with DevNet back in its early days uh, in 2014. And time's gone really fast, but uh, I would say DevNet and the really the DevNet community, uh, it's grown even faster. And the result of that has really been a, a shift in focus and perspective of, of Cisco and our product portfolio to really treat developers as our customers and software and APIs um, as integral parts of um, every, every platform and solution. And you, as part of the the job as a developer advocate in Cisco, what is that job really about? Like, what do you spend your time doing each day? Yeah, so fortunately, we have we have a great team of developer advocates, and typically each of us focuses on a specific Cisco product um, or technology space. And so when I joined DevNet, um, at least what I saw as sort of an underrepresented area. Um, was that around open source and standards? So Cisco's long been a leader in internet standards and a big user and supporter of open source. Now, just as APIs can be used to interact with our products, so too can um, uh, co-developing us uh, internet standards with us and open source projects uh, where we participate and then we use those projects in our products and solutions. So I advocate for standards and open source really across Cisco's entire portfolio, places where we're uh, working in standards organizations to define new standards, places where we're contributing to open source projects, and then using those pro uh, projects within our products and solutions. Excellent, that's awesome. So Charles, let's let's dive into code exchange itself. Um, can you give me an elevator pitch for code exchange? Like what's the quick, concise, like, why is code exchange something that, that our community might be interested in? Yeah, sure. So there is a, a ton of great code available on the internet. Uh, now the challenge is sorting through all that and finding code that it's not only technically aligned uh, with your needs, uh, but that you're actually able to use and uh, that you're legally you know, allowed to use. Now, Code Exchange addresses this need by providing a curated set of repos related to Cisco technologies that are well documented, clearly licensed, that you can responsibly use to jumpstart your work with Cisco products APIs. Excellent. And I think that is a key part is finding the good bits of information in the noise. So in preparation for today, we asked a few of the Code Exchange community members to tell us a little bit about their projects and some of their thoughts around Code Exchange itself. Uh, first up, we've got Joel King from WWT to kick us off. I've made several submissions to Cisco DevNet Code Exchange. One, a Tetration network policy publisher interface and policy API, and also a submission for using Excel spreadsheets and CSV files as a source of truth for network configurations. My colleagues at Worldwide Technology, Jeff Andiorio and Nick Thompson, have also made submissions to Code Exchange. Jeff's submissions are around Ansible and DNA Center. Nick's focused on a sandbox environment for learning how to use PyATS, Ansible, and Minio in a workshop for DevNet Create. All of these submissions were born out of a need for code, either for a workshop environment or advanced technology center, or also to enable a migration from our legacy data center into a Cisco ACI fabric. We find that Code Exchange, because it's a curated repository, 
is very beneficial to the open source community. There's some standard of quality around structure, formatting, and documentation of the repositories highlighted in Code Exchange. Excellent. It was great. It's great to hear from our community that's out there. But the question I have now is like, where did the idea for Code Exchange come from? Like, I, I see the value. We've seen the popularity for it. But I, I gotta ask, like, who had this idea? What? Uh, where did? Where were the original roots behind the Code Exchange concept? Yeah. So I'd say it, it really goes back to a, a belief that uh, developers are actually social beings. Um, sure, spending Friday night coding away. Uh, that may seem a bit antisocial, uh, but if you keep in mind that uh, we really, typically developers want to share their code, right? Show others how it works and really help them appreciate it uh, the same way that we do. So you combine that with GitHub and other cloud services, just making it amazingly easy to share code. And really there you have it. it, it it's a ready-made library of code for almost anything imaginable. Uh, but there is a catch. Uh, keep in mind that this code can be anywhere and really in a variety of states. So how many of you, for example, love writing documentation and, and you start off a project, a new project, by uh, putting down a clear description of exactly what it is you're working on, its current state, the steps someone else would go through in order to use it. Um, you know, let's say you stumble upon some of my code. Uh, was I just getting started, like just messing around with something new? Uh, do I really intend for you to use it? Uh, is it something that I even got working uh, yet? Um, and uh, did I make it clear if you're actually allowed to use it? So, you know, these are all great questions and they're questions that you can, you know, usually get an answer for. But I would say that once you do, the odds are unfortunately a little bit high that what you're going to find is that the code doesn't really match your needs as well as you had at first thought, you know, or hope. Um, so code exchange was really born out that there is just plenty of great code out there. Um, much of it is, is created by, say, Cisco employees, but perhaps even more is created by partners, customers, um, open source uh, enthusiasts, network engineers. So what we do with code exchange is we remove the ambiguity and we do a lot of the, the heavy lifting and answering those questions that I mentioned. We do that up front and we add the repos into code exchange only which only after all those questions have really been answered and addressed. You know, and then add to that some um, domain specific metadata, some really handy search capabilities and sorting mechanisms. And then what you have with code exchange is a way to really zero in on code that aligns with, with uh, your needs and matches them quite well, uh, that really gets you jump started with your own integrations. Now, I, th I think you hit on that there because finding good code that's ready to be used, there's so many projects that are out there that may not quite be ready to share with the community. Um, let's hear from one of our community members who is well aware of kind of putting something together because he's developed several examples up on Code Exchange that have been used for uh, collaboration use cases across the board. So let's hear from Jeff Levenseller from Presidio. Hi, and welcome to Cisco Live Home Edition. Uh, my name is Jeff Levenseller. I am a distinguished engineer at Presidio Network Solutions. I've been with the company for about six years. When I came to Presidio, I was really impressed with the amount of talent we had, the amount of scripting and automation people were doing, uh, but there was still a lot of reinventing the wheel and word of mouth, typical working in silos throughout the company. So one of the things we did was spin up a GitLab instance and really focus on developer adoption and uh, make the tools available for engineers to go out and teach themselves and find uh, and contribute their own tools uh, throughout the company. So the developer adoption really took off and we had a lot of people uh, really excited about coding and you know they would they would have uh, use cases I didn't think of and they would go out to GitHub and look for things and you can think of GitHub as a junk drawer. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for but it might take you a little bit longer. It might not uh, might not work. <laughs> Uh, and it's not vetted. So 
code exchange has the advantage uh, of being vetted by Cisco to make sure it's licensed, it's useful, uh, and above all, relevant to the industry. So my contributions to code exchange have been Cisco Axle, Cisco Riz, uh, Cisco UC serviceability, uh, some other call manager or unified communications managers, SDKs, uh, the interface with an older SOAP API, make it easier for beginners to get started. And you can go to Code Exchange and look for Cisco Axle, Cisco Riz, or just look for me, uh, Jeff Levensailer, and you can see my submissions and go check them out. So the next question I want to go through is, let's say we are a new developer. I'm out there and I, and I want to submit something. Um, can I submit code? Like, what does it take to be allowed to submit something into Code Exchange and make it into that portfolio? Yeah, so anyone can submit code into Code Exchange. Uh, now we do require that you have a DevNet account um, so that we're able to get in touch with you and, and really work with you to get your, your code in shape for so that it'll get it accepted and published in Code Exchange. Um, but as you know, creating a DevNet account, it, it's free. Anyone can have one. Uh, you can create one quite easily through a variety of social login mechanisms. So when we started Code Exchange, we seeded it with about 300 repos. Um, the idea being that we really felt we had to, to have a critical mass to really cover all Cisco technology areas. And those 300 uh, repos were by and large created by Cisco employees. Um, but ever since then, what we've seen is I would say about an equal rate of submission of code from Cisco employees and non-Cisco employees. Uh, the requirements to get your code into Code Exchange is that it's relevant to Cisco technologies, that it's publicly available on GitHub, that it's clearly licensed under an OSI approved license or the Cisco sample code license, and that there's clear documentation on how to use it. And really to make things easy, what we've also provided then is a template repo that serves as an example of the types of things we look for and can help you get your code in shape more quickly. Now, keep in mind that while the code must be related to Cisco technology, it does not need by any means to be Cisco specific. So what do I mean by that? Um, I mentioned earlier, I do a lot with internet standards. And if you think of network programmability, some key standards there are NetConf and RESTConf and Yang models. So if you have some code that uh, uses those standards, to uh, interact with a network device. And that could be any network device that's standards compliant. Um, that's a fantastic repo for, for code exchange and something we would definitely welcome. Now, I wanna hear from this next video and I'm excited about this one. Igor is a recent submitter um, of leverages some Cisco technology, um, specifically uh, DevNet Sandbox. So let's hear from Igor and his excellent uh, code example that's up on Code Exchange today. Hey everyone, my name is Igor Krochinkov. I'm an network guy from Russia. Today I'd love to share one of my personal automation projects with you. This is a topology visualizer written in Python and JavaScript. The solution was fully tested in a Cisco Modeling Labs DevNet sandbox, which is absolutely great. The script collects the LLDP data straight from the network devices with Nornir and Napalm frameworks to generate a topology view for the next UI toolkit. The topologies are interactive and customizable. The script also caches the topology every time you run it in order to identify and visualize the topology changes. I'm also working on a NetBox plugin integration. I'll be sharing my code, so stay tuned and check this out if you're interested. Thank you for watching. Now I have to say, that is a code exchange example that's after my own heart. He's leveraging DevNet Sandbox. He's using NetBox as a source of truth, network diagrams that are dynamic. I mean, that is kind of the epitome of an excellent, perfect code exchange sample and the kinds of things that we like to see that are up there. Now, let's suppose a, a submission like Igor's comes in and it's an excellent uh, example of code that could be relevant to a Cisco technology but maybe it's missing some of the components that you talked about that are required. Maybe it's missing a license or the instructions aren't quite good. Um, what happens next? Is it just declined? No, no, almost never uh, do we really end up declining a repo. Um, 
you know, I'd say the typical flow is like this. Uh, let's say you submit your repo into code exchange. Now, within you know a day or two, typically, uh, someone from my team reviews your code and gets back to you um, with anything that needs to be fixed or just some some suggestions of things that we think would you know make it uh, make it better. So most people find this help uh, this feedback to be uh, very helpful, and not only that, but also quite easy to address. So once addressed. Uh, you let us know that you've made the changes. We go uh, verify those, and assuming everything looks good, then we accept your repo and publish it in Code Exchange. Now, the most common request we make, uh, Hank, I think, as you mentioned, um, is for clarifications in the README. Like, what actually is your code doing? Uh, what's the current state of it? What are the steps someone you know would need to go through if, if they want to install it and start using it? Another very common ask that we have is um, just clarifications around the licensing to make sure that an appropriate license has been chosen uh, that makes um, it very clear what the terms of use are. Excellent, and I think that's good. And I, I will admit, I've submitted several submissions into Code Exchange. the pieces go through and, and Charles or one of the other reviewers almost always comes back to me with, hey, could you clarify this and go through? Um, and I've never had any problem kind of meeting those yeah. demands because we do really want excellent examples and, and full of possibilities inside of the portfolio that are out there. Now, one topic that's important, I think, to everybody out there is security. And our next video is from Dimitri, who has a, a security focused submission in Code Exchange that you can check out today. Hi, my name is Dimitri, and I'm senior network engineer at Disney Streaming Services. Recently, I published my web application. Uh, I've created for one Cisco ICE project into DevNet Code Exchange. For all new ICE deployments, it is always challenging to get whole map only devices into the ICE. Uh, I used the app to check notification sessions on the switches, um, collect map only devices and potentially failed .1x devices, and put them into the proper ICE identity group using API with just several clicks. I'm really excited to see a lot of people get interested in network automation, scripting routine, or just replacing manual tasks with scripts. Therefore, I believe that code exchange is the crucial point for connecting people, uh, which allows to discover, uh, learn a lot for other, from other de developers, and uh, most importantly, start using codes for own application. All right, so we, we've heard about some network automation examples, we've seen some security examples, but Code Exchange is about kind of everything around Cisco technologies that are there. Um, as you've kind of looked at the portfolio, are there some areas, categories, uh, types of technology that you think we could we could really benefit from some more examples inside of Code Exchange that we'd, uh, we'd like to ask our audience for? So Hank, with over 700 repos already in Code Exchange and more being added every day, you know, I think we really have everything covered. No, I mean, uh, seriously, um, while everything in code exchange uh, has value to a developer, the majority of the code is what I would consider uh, building blocks, tools, utilities, um, things that teach concepts. And so they're helpful to a developer, um, but they're really meant to be used in combination with other things. And what we've heard from many in the DevNet community uh, that you really need more of are use case focused uh, solutions. Now, with that in mind, what we've done is created Automation Exchange. And what Automation Exchange does is it takes code that's already available in Code Exchange and it combines it with uh, a clear use case and um, uh, a business need um, to solve a real world problem. So Automation Exchange is relatively new. We announced it last year. And by definition, it involves only a subset of, um, of the code that's already in Code Exchange. Uh, there's about 100 use case driven uh, solutions available already, but more would certainly be very welcome. Um, the rules for contributing to Automation Exchange are exactly the same as with Code Exchange. And we're actually working to align the submission and review process to make those more similar as well. Excellent. And I think you're right on that. Um, 
especially as I've talked with engineers and customers that are moving along the network automation and programmability journey, it's that trans transition from just testing something out in the lab, uh, kind of learning how something works to applying it to real world problems is that that big, it's a pretty big step. And it's one that I think a lot of organizations are trying to figure out how to take. And so the automation exchange use cases, I think are, are a fantastic way to help organizations kind of move into that direction. And the last, you've heard Charles and I talk about code exchange for a little bit, and I've got one more video for you. This is from Ugo, who's gonna share three excellent reasons why you should be looking at and submitting your projects into code exchange. Let's hear from Ugo. Hello everyone, my name is Ugo Omekua and I'm a technical solutions architect for Cisco Systems and I'm going to talk about three reasons why you want to submit your code to the Cisco DevNet Code Exchange. The first reason is for feedback. When you submit your code to the Cisco DevNet Code Exchange, your code is going to be vetted by a Cisco DevNet advocate who's going to make recommendations on ways to improve your code, your code's documentation, and presentation. The second reason is for promotion. One of the best ways to let the world know about your code is to submit it to the Cisco DevNet Code Exchange, where it can be easily found through search results or directly at developer.cisco.com. You see, your code is not only the solution to a particular need, but it can also serve as a great learning resource for other developers. And the third reason is for achievement. When your code is listed on the Cisco DevNet Code Exchange, it's gonna look very impressive on your resume, to your managers, colleagues, and clients, which can lead to more opportunities. I hope that this information has helped you. My name is Ugo Amekawa. Have a great day. All right, well, that's all the time we have today for Code Exchange. I want to thank Charles for joining me to kind of talk about the history of Code Exchange, how you can get involved, and some of the things that you can look for that's out there. And I definitely want to thank all of our community members who have submitted, and particularly Joel, Jeff, Igor, Dimitri, and Uno, Ugo, for sharing some thoughts with us today. Charles, any final thoughts for us? Well, uh, thanks, Hank. Uh, it's really been a pleasure being here and getting to uh, share my passions around open source and standards with everyone. I hope that many of you who are listening, you'll check out Code Exchange and, you know, who knows, uh, hopefully even submit a repo sometime. Um, so thanks and enjoy the rest of DevNet Day. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening to this segment on Code Exchange, and we will talk to you all again soon.